Hello, welcome back to Mark's House and Garden UK. Today I'm going to have a go at sharpening some of my gardening tools, namely these small loppers and these secateurs. All the equipment I'm going to use is laid out on the gravel before me. Why am I sharpening them? Well, for obvious reasons, they've become blunt, or as the Americans would say, dull, with use. So I'm going to do a bit of home maintenance. Now in the past, I have to admit, I've allowed tools to become so badly maintained that I've had to go and buy new ones. So this is a bit of a drive to be a bit more sustainable and environmentally friendly and also save a bit of money. I don't think it's going to be a difficult job. Let me talk through what I've got in front of me. A pair of gardening gloves. These are not your disposable throwaway ones. These are the new ones I've just bought. And they're actually supposed to be thorn proof and they are proving to be very good gloves. They're breathable on the back, but leather on the, the palm uh, facing side, which makes them much more safe. And I did actually do an experiment the other day where I uh, grabbed hold of a thorn twig quite hard and it just didn't go through. Incidentally, everything you see in this video is available through my Amazon shop and there are links in the description box below this video if you buy through those links, I do earn some commission. Your support is very much appreciated. Right, so let's do a bit of a test. I'm just going to cut these. It's still going through them, but it's fraying a little bit and it's not cutting cleanly. Um, so we'll see what happens when we've, we've sharpened that in a moment. The same is true with these loppers. Yeah. It's actually not even cutting cleanly through with the lopper, so they are quite dull, quite blunt, and I can actually see nicks on the edge of the blade. Those I'm going to sharpen without taking apart, but the loppers, I'm actually going to take the brave step of dismantling them. I'm going to bring the camera in a bit closer so that you can see what I'm doing. Let me talk through the equipment first. I've got some WD-40. Brilliant stuff that. It drives out damp and it frees sticky mechan mechanisms. So it's a brilliant thing to have in the house that. A couple of spanners there to take those apart with. Obviously the loppers and the secateurs, which are gonna be sharpened. And I've got a sharpening stone and some vegetable oil out of the kitchen. And I've also bought a more of the, uh, the scourer out of the kitchen. So let's bring the camera in close and get on with the job in hand. I'm afraid I will disappear from view as I perform this operation. This is a plant tray, again also available as a link uh, below this video. Why have I got a plant tray? I always think it's a good idea if you're taking things apart to have something underneath them to catch any bits which might fall out. So I've got two spanners here, one for that side and a movable spanner for this side. Incidentally this is this spanner was a bit seized up and uh, that's why I had the WD-40 spray. You basically you just spray it into the mechanism and it, it just frees things up. So let's now use these two spanners to take these apart. I'm going to hold the uh, bolt underneath and then just gently loosen the bolt on top. And you can see there, it's freeing up quite nicely. Last time I used these two spanners was when I repaired my wheelbarrow tyre. Again, another slightly more sustainable way of doing things. So there's the two pieces of the loppers and there's all the bits. So let's just put that tray to one side. That bit there is almost like a hammer that these close up against. So you don't have to sharpen that, but you could give it a good, a bit of a clean. So what I will do is I'll just spray a bit of that on and give a bit, a bit of a rub down with my scourer. And that'll do for that half. And we'll come back to putting it back together again. I'm actually probably cleaning off quite a bit of residue off here. Um, these are bypass secateurs and the blade bypasses that and that's how it cuts. So I'm cleaning off a bit of revenue on the, uh, residue on this side. Now let's get round to sharpening this blade. That side of it remains flat. And the bevel or the angle is on that side. So you don't ever sharpen this side, you sharpen this side. 
And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to put a bit of oil on the stone. And you might think it's curious using vegetable oil out of the kitchen, but when I bought a pair of um, mini electric um, hedge trimmers recently, they actually said in the instructions to use vegetable oil. Now there's an angle on this side and it's flat on that side. So let's just rotate round on that sharpening stone. With the angle. And hopefully you can see that I'm actually just sharpening away. I'll just clean this side up with the scour at the same time. When I've done this, I'll go and do a bit of snipping around the garden and I'll tell you whether I think it's had any effect this. These loppers, by the way, they're only about £15 and they've been really useful. And I've had much more than £15 worth of use out of these. They weren't expensive loppers. You don't have to buy expensive things, I don't think. There's so much competition out there nowadays, you can get away with very reasonably priced tools. And I'm just sort of filing away really in, in, in the process of doing that I am actually sharpening this side of the blade and I can see and I don't know if you can there is now bare metal on that side of the blade it's still flat on this side but there's a lovely clean angle there I'm just going to do it a bit more now I'm sure that in days of old you might be able to take your tools to a hardware shop and do get them to do this and they would have great skills at doing this but unfortunately in the UK I don't know about other places in the world who watch my videos but there don't seem to be skilled people around to do this kind of thing anymore that is lovely and sharp there's still a few ridges on the edge of that blade so I think I'm just going to carry on a little bit further And we have a lovely clean metal edge to a blade there. All we have to do now is put them back together and spray them a bit. Well, let's bring in our bits and bobs again. And we can see there that uh, that is how they work. And that passes a bypass lopper or bypass secateurs. The top blade bypasses the bottom. You get other ones which I think are called hammer loppers or hammer secateurs where there's a there's a base and it doesn't bypass. Okay, let's put the bolt through, let's put the top piece on, let's put the washer on, let's apply a bit of WD-40 and then let's apply the nut back onto the bolt. Sometimes it's a good idea when you're putting bolts onto nuts to go in the opposite direction first until you feel a click and that way you know that it's on the thread. So I'm now putting that counterclockwise or anti-clockwise until I hear a click. And I'm going to take my glove off to do this because I just want a bit more feeling. So if I do that counterclockwise like that and I hear a click, it then just goes on easily, can you see? Now there's a rubber internal washer on that bolt which is now making it sticky put my gloves back on and then we'll tighten that up and hopefully we'll have a lovely virtually brand new pair of very sharp loppers put that on the bottom hold it in place with my fingers finger tight and now let's just those up and there's the corner of my garden where I've got lots of old twigs that's a bit tight it's actually so tight it's not opening so we'll just loosen it a tad and typically you can probably hear in the background the car has just arrived on the drive so you can probably hear the the noise of wheels on gravel so I'm just going to stop filming for a second and I'll see you near a pile of twigs where we can test these newly sharpened loppers. 
So this is that big pile of organic debris I talked about earlier. I'll leave this, it's a wildlife tip actually. If you want wildlife in your garden, don't have a garden that's too tidy. So I have a great big pile of scrub over here and it's alive with birds. And I'm pretty sure underneath there, there's probably voles and mice and possibly even hedgehogs and toads. So it's great to see it actually, because I imagine what's living in it. Let's give these loppers a bit of a road test. Now I remember how difficult it was to use these until I sharpened them. So I'll be able to tell you uh, whether I think it's done a job or not. So here we go. Light butter. It's just gone through it like butter. It's so easy, you can see there, this is old wood and wood that's been cut off the tree goes harder as it dries and that's just slicing through cleanly. Very pleased with that. I'm going to go back now and do the secateurs following exactly the same principle. But I'm going to do it in fast forward because I don't need to repeat myself, but you'll see a short um, period of fast forward video where I'm sharpening the secateurs back to base. I'm surprised, I've surprised myself. Now I did contemplate taking those apart to, to get right into the corner of this blade, but in actual fact, when I look at the way it closes, it doesn't start to cut until it gets about 20% the way along the blade anyway. So the access I got with this sharpening stone into that blade without taking them apart was sufficient. And anyway, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. I didn't want to take those apart because I don't have great history with this type of spring and if I was to take that apart I'd probably never get it back together. These are those brilliant Kingswood secateurs which I bought because I thought they looked quite retro and there is a video on my channel about those. I'll put the link to that video at the end of this one. All of these things are available from Amazon. I'll put my Amazon links in the description box below this video and if you buy them I do get a commission. I've said it before. I do appreciate your support. It costs you no extra, but it contributes some money towards the projects I do in my garden. Over my left shoulder, there's an Amazon box, and in that box is my favourite gardening tool. I'm about to do a video on that, a separate video, and I'll link to that at the end of this one. So if you're curious about what's in that box, click on the link at the end of this video, and I'll see you soon for some more tool maintenance adventures. Bye for now.